What you're looking at right now is Crimson, a film that came out in 2020, receiving little promotion and excitement altogether. This movie was directed by Gregory Plotkin, best known for directing Hellfest and Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension, which says a lot about this movie, huh? Apparently this film starred Face Rug, why haven't I heard of this film before now? And it was also meant to start a cinematic franchise of film starting to face clan. Yet there's only one film available. With a trailer and a soundtrack released with hype uploads of Face Rug's YouTube channel, the film promised to bring Face Rug into the film's spotlight as bored just a content creator. Crimson is only available for a limited time, only on Invis.tv. Yeah, if you haven't heard of Crimson, then I don't blame you. The movie came out in the height of the pandemic, which is typical but strange because production on movies shut down back in 2020. To my doubts, I have to applaud the filmmakers for making a movie since those require time and effort, even if I feel the need to critique the film. So the film starts off with a montage showcasing Face Rook's accomplishments and popularity over the years. Next thing you know, we then come back to Brian walking around his new house before we then transition to, to a quote unquote found footage style vlog. Rug experiences some spooky moments happening when a balloon shows up outside his front door. He records the incident live before going into a little title card of Crimson. We then watch a video of Rug talking to Anthony before we then meet his parents. Brian talks about moving into his new house and memories that he shared with his parents throughout the years. The conversation is then interrupted by a fake Halloween prank because I guess this movie takes place on Halloween though it's not explicitly stated. FaZe then records a vlog for his channel with Anthony and Noah sitting right beside him. The power then goes out as Rug plays Call of Duty, which means that more scary scenes happen, but it fails at making the audience feel anything due to Rug's annoyance remaining persistent throughout the movie. The next day, Anthony presents Brian with a rocket, which backfires horribly. The movie explains that Anthony bought the rocket from a private dealer from the black market, which is weird because the film never explains how Anthony got in contact with these dealers or why he decided to embark on a black market at all. Anyways, they light up the rocket, which causes smoke to fill up the space between them. To Brian's reluctance, he scolds Anthony for buying the rocket illegally and getting them into potential harm. Rug then contacts the police, which introduces us to two unnecessary characters that serve little to the plot. Two officers, which I can't even remember their names correctly. So, he talks to them about the rockets and tells them about the face clan, which they find odd. He later introduces himself to his neighbors, which is fine because he's a humble guy. They meet a few people, especially a guy who will come back later in the film. The interaction from the dialogue to the acting feels uncomfortable from Rug's POV, so it doesn't exactly work in keeping the movie scary or creepy, just a little embarrassing. Here's a note to the filmmakers. Introducing a random character that has less development and has no relation to the main character creates an awkward dynamic with no tension or stakes added to the film. If there was an additional backstory between Rug and this potential villain character, it would at least kick the plot into high gear with some importance. Otherwise, the plot feels flattering. Anyways, the next shot shows Rug going back home, but not before hearing circus music outside of his lawn, which is shot from the lens of the security cameras. The security camera angle that the film implements is okay, but the execution is not it because the film doesn't explain if the finished film is actually being edited by Rugg's team of editors as the twist of the film. Later that day, Brian invites his friends over to check out his new house. To Anthony's disapproval, he is annoyed by Rugg's antics altogether. Noah looks into the camera footage on the PC monitor and witnesses something. Rugg's house resembling the face of a clown. Brian then points out the facial features from a drone shot. Personally, this scene feels unnecessary because it feels like there wasn't enough buildup to assume that the scene was needed. Anyways, the group walks over to the house and sees a bouncy castle outside the neighborhood. Noah is hesitant to play outside of a bouncy castle in the middle of the house, but they think nothing of it so they haul ahead inside and accidentally intentionally deflate the thing. Rug's friends run away and hide for a brief moment before booking it. As they run, they experience a mishap along the way, encountering a woman who scolds them immediately, making them confused. When they get back home, Noah and Anthony tell Rug about some footage. Anthony reveals that someone was watching them from outside. The group then plans a stakeout filled with in and out and energy drinks. They witness a small car piled up with many clowns coming out as they laugh and laugh for a brief while. For some reason, Rug decides to step out of his car into the open and investigate the yellow car. The stakeout doesn't last long as the boys hear a generic clown music from outside the house and leave. Yeah, if you didn't notice from these films, Rug and his friends put themselves in constant danger, which feels a little out of character for them since there isn't a need for Rug to be in this situation in the first place. But since this is a movie, something has to happen to get the ball rolling. The next day, Maria finds a marionette toy and thinks that Rug has gone crazy after finding it inside of a crumbled up box. Rug finds a note that reads, Dear Rug, Welcome to the game. Are you having fun yet? 
we then get exposition dumping with Rug deciding to investigate the clown sightings, googling various articles from news outlets in San Diego, finding one about Bobo the Clown. Apparently, the circle jerk decided to unalive 10 people with a skewering knife after a freak circus accident left his dog mauled by a lion. The unknown clown then left the bonfire afterwards, and ever since then, people dressed as clowns continue to stalk the residents. Rug faces more pranks in the coming days, with his refrigerator filled with cream pies to his car spray painted and bamboozled, thinking that his friends must be pranking him ever since he's moved. His entire family looks at him in disbelief and shame, which makes him less trustworthy of his own friends. The next day, Brian discovers a clown shoe inside of his dryer, but not before the clown shut down his electricity inside his home, convincing Rug that not only have the clown stalked him, but also broke into his house. More weird things happen to him and Noah, which scared them out into the back door. Rug then calls the cops, but discovers that his brother Brandon is behind the pranks, leaving him terrified for his life. Warning comes with shots of Rug's giant mansion, complete with voiceover accompaniments from the house's security cameras. Um, I'm good, you know, just trying to get used to the whole house. I knew what happened when I moved out, but it actually hit me hard. He talks to his mother about moving away to a new house and the struggles of adulthood, hinting that they might sell the house. The next day, Rug finds a clown nose, accusing his friends once again for trespassing. The cops are then called, accusing Rug of trespassing into his lawn and entering the bouncy castle, which Rug denies. The guy even starts to arm himself with training after multiple attempts to call the cops fails in his favor. By the way, I think that during the scene, Rug is listening to the Crimson soundtrack, so I guess this is more of a promotional plug than anything. Later that night, the power goes out again, to which Rug then arms himself with a baseball bat. Rug looks into his house carefully, which results in another jump scare. <laughs> The clown then scares him from the window as Bobo the Clown shows up scaring Rug back into his friends. Thanks to horror movie logic, Rug splits up with Anthony as he sends Noah to check the back door, resulting into another jump scare in a cackle. The film then comes back to Rug and Anthony discovering a vandalized painting and a present. But this isn't a birthday present, it's an explosive one. After that encounter, Rug finds out that his dog has been taken in by the clowns. At this point, Brian aka Rug is fed up and decides to take action to Anthony's reluctance. Anthony scolds Rug, trying to convince him not to put themselves in any danger, but Rug doesn't care. He's determined to get his dog back, and he's not gonna let them get away with it. They enter the home, looking disturbed at the sight apparently. As Rug and his crew explore the place, they encounter a mysterious room and look through the background. Another clown shows up, while Rug, annoyingly distressed, asks for his dog back. The clowns don't listen and continue to taunt them, which gets annoying really fast and quick. These clown rooms leave the film looking very cheap, boring, and dull, since the whole thing just looks like a giant set constructed by a bunch of high schoolers. After more running courtesy of Anthony and Noah, we cut back to a supposed flashback scene showcasing Anthony's thoughts on Rug and this whole situation. This scene feels very out of context judging by the way it was placed onto the final edit, and it doesn't exactly have much impact on this ending or Anthony as a character. The trinamic trio look through multiple rooms to find the dog, but they end up splitting up, which is very convenient by the way. More jump scares happen resulting in confusion, leaving Anthony scared for his life. I freaking hate clowns! <laughs> They get out safely and run away into another room and another jump scare, but then split up as Rug falls into the abyss. How enormous is this house anyway? As Rug falls, he finds Lola his dog safe from harm, but not before seeing a big twist, with the reveal of Bobo the Clown, the supposed leader of the clowns. The big twist is that this weird neighbor guy was Bobo the Clown, and he's come to tell Rug and his friends that they are staying and going to be unalived. So I guess that means that the rest of the neighbors who were rude to Rug possibly weren't in on the act too? This reveal stuns Rug to run out the front door, leading to the police officer showing up out of nowhere and ready to strike the counterfeit clowns off screen. After that fiasco, we cut to a stock video of a fake police station because I guess the budget couldn't afford more locations. The two officers escort Rug and friends out and congratulate them for their bravery. After salutations, the two cops then tell them about Operation Crimson, an operation that took place at least 32 years, which honestly I don't think it was ever established in the film. And the reason why the cops weren't able to help them is because they have never seen the clowns or the incident in over 30 years and they have never believed them. Anyways, the cops reveal that they were FaZe Rug fans who saw the clip of themselves go viral, so they decide to clip another viral video. I guess, Operation Crimson, which was not only the thing that Rug was talking about, but it was also a big factor in the events of the film. It had never gotten addressed up until this point, so this massive plot reveal doesn't exactly feel special. 
The movie ends with a slow close-up of Rog for some reason as Walk In from the soundtrack blares into the credits once more. All right, time for my review. So this movie lacks everything. There's hardly anything happening that really makes sense, let alone entertaining. The story lacks any emotional depth, substance, or action, especially since the characters have no development that changes throughout the course of the story. There is so much unnecessary dialogue and filler added, which clutters the rest of the plot and story. Certain scenes don't contribute much to the main story either, while the writing felt flat. From a writing standpoint, Face Rug did not need to be in this film. If it had replaced Rug and added a different character, the plot and writing would have still been very generic. The film's acting is subpar, which to be fair, I don't blame the actors for trying their best to do well in a weak script. Although I do think that they should have given it their all in spite of being in this mediocre film. The main villain is very forgettable and weak, with no relations to the characters or story at all. I honestly forgot he was even a character before making this video. The big twist in the end isn't very effective or rewarding, nor does it leave a long-lasting impression on any of the characters. The main character Rug feels annoyed in this entry, which particularly when he starts acting out and accusing all of his friends left or right. The film also cuts back to more minutes of jump scares, which aren't very effective. No and Anthony have no effect to the story whatsoever, as the roles felt minuscule and non-existent. This movie is the definition of missed potential, because it hardly tries to break the cycle of most generic horror movies. For one, it isn't inventive in the slightest. The premise has been done many times, making it dull and unremarkable. There's no emotional weight lifted off from any of the characters, especially since the ending feels rushed. The story and lore of Rugg's neighborhood, in and outside of itself, doesn't exactly go far and is often left regarded for silly pranks and Rugg's antics. I can't say if I've seen movies like this before since it's technically a YouTuber movie, so this is more of a first rather than anything. The film's found footage angle with the YouTube cameras don't provide a creepy tone to the jump scares, making them ineffective. The characters barely moved to any locations outside their neighborhood, making the film's climax and pacing boring to a certain extent. The soundtrack is forgettable and very out of tone since this is supposed to be a horror flick. This whole film feels like an extended face rug video that went behind the scenes all of a sudden, making it lackluster in terms of scares and tension. It also feels like a fever dream that just so happens to be released at the height of the pandemic. All in all, I'll give Crimson 2.5 stars out of 5. But what do you think about Crimson? Did you like it? Tell me in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter for more film related posts. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy this one too. So uh, go ahead and subscribe. I really hate this movie. It just plain sucks.